Good morning everyone. I'm out here in the swamps of central Alabama and today I will be targeting one of Alabama's rarest salamanders, the Gulf Coast Mud Salamander. Um, last time you guys seen me I was heading down to South Georgia to look for some eastern indigo snakes, but that trip totally did not go as planned and I didn't find anything at all. It was just very unproductive. So it is now the next day and I'm out here in these really unique wetlands here in central Alabama. And obviously the Gulf Coast mud salamanders are the big target, but there are a few other species of salamanders here that I would like to see, including um, a species of dwarf salamander that I have not found before. So I'm going to get a feel for this habitat here and hike around and we'll see what we can find. First find of the day is this nice adult marbled salamander here, really clean looking individual, nice bands. Um, this is one of the more common species of mole salamander that we have here in the southeast. Um, especially in these floodplain habitats. Now it is way past breeding season for these guys, but as long as it is wet and cool, they do remain fairly surface active um, throughout much of the winter months, um, even into the spring in areas where they are common. Nice little marbled salamander. Um, these guys breed in dry floodplain pools in the fall, and the females actually guard their eggs until the pools fill up and then the eggs hatch. So yeah, cool little fall braiding salamanders. I'm just going to put this log back here and keep on hiking. And the next find of the day is this little southern ringneck snake here. It was actually in the bark of this rotting log here. Um, these little guys are super common throughout their range, as you guys probably know. Um, one of the easiest snakes to find. Um, can live in a variety of habitats. And these eat a variety of smaller reptiles and amphibians. Um, in this case, I would say that this little guy is a salamander eater because he is hanging out here in this wetland area where there is a lot of different species of salamanders that would be plenty small enough for him to eat. So I'm just going to put this little guy back and we'll see what else we can find. And the next salamander of the day is exactly what I came here to find. This is the Gulf Coast Mud Salamander. Um, they have the westernmost known range of all of the mud salamander subspecies. They can actually be found as far west as Louisiana. And they very little is known about their range. Um, this is one of the few known sites for these guys. In the state of Alabama, they have a very fragmented distribution. And as you can see, these are similar to the eastern mud salamanders that I had in my last video. If you look closely, you can tell that these have less pattern. Um, they're more of a brownish, almost a salmony, pinkish coloration. Um, really unique little salamanders. And they're also a bit smaller. I think these are one of the smallest, if not the smallest, mud salamander subspecies. Yeah, definitely not an easy salamander to find. This subspecies is actually most active in January and February because it takes a lot of water to flood their burrows and until those burrows are flooded, it's extremely tough to find them on the surface. Um, it's a bit early, it's still late November, but we had some good rains, a good temperature drop, and it's enough for these guys to be on the surface. So I'm going to get some great photographs of this little salamander and keep on flipping and maybe we'll find some more. All right, everyone, Gulf Coast Mud Salamander number three for the day. Um, unfortunately, the second one actually got away from me in a crayfish burrow. This one nearly did. Um, these guys are really hard to get a hold of, but yeah, um, a larger adult, a bit more pattern than the last one as well, a little bit different looking. I'm going to set it down for some pictures and we'll get a closer look. All right, right here is a closer look at this gorgeous little Gulf Coast mud salamander. This one is prettier than the last one. Also a lot chunkier. Um, 
probably has a belly full of earthworms. These guys actually have some little unique white speckles along the side, and I have not seen that in other subspecies of mud salamanders. You can see them right here. Now, the underside is actually solid. There's no speckles, and it is that salmony orange pinkish coloration. Do you see the nice little white speckles? Um, a little bit of brown and black speckling on top. Um, all around us, a really unique looking little salamander. It's going to be hard to top this one, but I still have plenty of time ahead of me. It's only 9 a.m. right now, so I'm going to give it a shot. But I'm going to get some good photographs of this guy as well. And I'd actually be a female, but um, anyway, I'm going to get some good photographs and put this individual back. And right here we have another nice marbled salamander. I have moved to a slightly drier habitat away from the water just to change things up a bit. Um, again, way past breeding season for these guys. All of the pools are full now. Um, you know, their eggs have hatched. There's larvae in the water, but they are still out. That's a good sign of a health, healthy population here. Um, yeah, another good looking marbled salamander. As you can see, there's still little isolated pools of water but nothing as consistent as what I was in back there. So yeah, I'm going to keep on hiking, let this little marbled salamander go in its burrow here, and maybe we will see some more imbistomatids. And right here we have Gulf Coast Mud Salamander number four for the day. This is getting insane. This is the biggest and chunkiest one yet too. For this subspecies, this is actually pretty large. Um, this may be a gravid female. Right here is one more look at this big, chunky, adult Gulf Coast mud salamander. Upon further inspection, I'm pretty confident that this is in fact a gravid female, so I'm not going to bother her too much. I have her here in some shallow water where she will feel safe, but there's really nowhere to escape to. Um, but yeah, this is about as nice as you're going to get for this subspecies. Big, chunky, pretty long. It appears to be a decently old adult. Um, Obviously this subspecies is smaller overall because they have a harsher environment, I mean, a much shorter season to be out because it gets really hot and dry here in the summer. And really they are living most of their lives underground other than when these burrows flood. And I will show the habitat and talk about that here once I get done flipping these adults. But um, yeah, what an incredible salamander. I'm going to get some quick photos and put her back under her log and we'll see what else we can find. Right here is a quick look at the habitat where I am finding all of these Gulf Coast mud salamanders. As you can see, really muddy, but also pretty sandy throughout most of it. Um, lots of leaf litter, lots of crayfish burrows, lots of burrowing opportunity for the salamanders to construct their own burrows. One of the main things here is, as you can see, the water is actually flowing and it is really clean looking. That's because it is. There are multiple springs feeding this here and springs are a requirement for mud salamanders during the breeding season because they need groundwater to lay their eggs in. They breed in the fall and lay eggs in the winter months and they like to make sure they have somewhere that is above freezing temperature for their nest. Um, and typically the eggs hatch in the spring and the larvae disperse into this habitat right here. So yeah, really unique habitat. There's not a whole lot of this in the southeast. Um, pristine mud salamander habitat like this can be tough to find, but I'm just going to keep on hiking and hopefully we'll see some more. And right here we have another little marbled salamander for good measure. This is in C2 here. Obviously these are much easier to film in C2 than the mud salamanders who dive into crayfish burrows as soon as you flip their logs. But anyway, going to move this little guy here, put its log back, and keep on hiking this nice muddy stream. And right here we have a really nice looking little spotted salamander. Nice little colorful juvenile here under this log. Um, spotted salamanders are another really common species of ambistoma or mole salamander. 
that occurs throughout much of the southeast but these guys actually move to fish free ponds in the late winter and early spring to breed whereas the marbled salamanders lay eggs on land and breed in the fall so it is just the beginning of the season for these guys i will probably be seeing a lot more of them as winter and super early spring progresses um, they typically breed into about february down here obviously in the more northern parts of their range they breed later in into the year and you know then it's more what most people would consider springtime but down here in the southeast these little guys are basically winter breeders now this is a juvenile here probably not sexually mature yet so just out and about good weather for them to be surface active but yeah nice little spotted salamander i'm going to get some quick pictures let this little spotted go and keep on after it right here we have gulf coast mud salamander number five for the day this is just a thin little juvenile here but still really nice and um, this day just keeps getting crazier and crazier as far as numbers go this is actually up there with my best days of finding midland mud salamanders back home in tennessee and that's pretty crazy because this is not an easy subspecies of mud to find perhaps all of the years of finding midland mud salamanders back home has paid off but um yeah my phone is actually getting really low right now because of all of the videos i have been filming so i'm going to go eat lunch charge it up and come back and we'll see what else we can find i am back from lunch and the next salamander of the day is another lifer for me this little guy is the Hillis's dwarf salamander, Eurysia hillisii. These are among the smallest salamanders in the world. I'm right up there with pygmy salamanders and some of the other little tiny plethodonids that exist out there. Um, now this is one of several species of dwarf salamander, but most of them live in pretty similar habitats. Um, Typically, slow-moving streams and floodplain swamps in pine forest is where you find these little guys. And oddly enough, these have been the hardest salamander of the day to find. I actually had one get away from me earlier, and I was starting to get worried that I wouldn't find another one. But sure enough, the first log I flipped right here, as soon as I made it back into the wetland area here, had this little Hillis's dwarf salamander under it. To my knowledge, these are the smallest members of the genus Eurysia. And I think they are one of the more recently described um, species of dwarf salamanders. I'll have to check up on that. But yeah, really unique little salamander. Appears to be a male here. You can sort of see his little Siri. If you look, there are some little round bumps underneath where his nostrils would be right here um, typically the Eurysia especially the two line salamanders the males actually grow these and they can be really long during the breeding season because it allows them to detect pheromones and find females but yeah Hillis's dwarf salamander I'm going to get some photos of this little guy and see if we can find anything else Next up, we have the distant relative of the little Hillis's dwarf salamander. This is the three-line salamander. Um, these are the more common species of Eurysia that lives here. They are commonly found along floodplains, um, slow-moving sluggish streams, swampy areas. They can occasionally be found around rock formations in the upper Piedmont and the southern part of the Blue Ridge Mountains. But typically, they are found in these lowland habitats. And they are basically the Piedmont and Coastal Plain equivalent of the cave and longtail salamanders that many of you may be more familiar with in the Appalachian Mountains. I actually grew up with those and I have not found many three-line salamanders. So even though they are common, I appreciate seeing them. Um, these little guys are actually pretty good climbers even though they don't have to use that ability throughout much of their range here in these swamps other than maybe to you know climb up trees in search of insects or something but yeah three line salamander as you can see there are two distinct stripes down the side one on the back here and 
that's where they get their name. But I'm just going to put this little guy back and we'll see what else we can find. And the next salamander of the day is this perfect example of an adult spotted salamander here. This is a beautiful, really dark individual, really vibrant yellow spots, and it has the nice orange contrast with the spots on the head if you look closely. You can see it transitions from yellow to orange there. That's one of my favorite color variations of the spotted salamander. Now this is a good sized adult, here. not the biggest individual, but just really nicely marked. Um, nice and dark on top. A lot of spotteds are more of a grayish coloration, but this one is almost black, with the exception of its sides. But yeah, really nice spotted salamander. This one was actually found in more traditional habitat here. As you can see, I'm in the one of the larger areas of this wetland here where it makes basically a vernal pool and this is the pond that these spotted salamanders will be breeding in um, later this winter and maybe into early spring as well yeah really nice spotted salamander i think this is really about as good as it's going to get for this wetland i feel like i've almost found everything here if i haven't found every salamander here so yeah i'm going to explore some other wetlands and start wrapping the day up. Ha ha, check it out. Four-toed salamander. This is actually something that I was starting to expect to see at the other side, even though I hadn't heard of them being found there because I was starting to see some sphagnum moss. Um, these are lungless salamanders and they are the only members of the genus Hemodactylium. And one way you can tell these apart from other small woodland salamanders is, if I can get it to focus here, the easiest way to identify these is they have a solid white belly with black polka dots, almost like a Dalmatian type pattern. And they are only the only salamanders in the world that look like this. Definitely the only salamanders in their range that look like this. This actually appears to be a gravid female here. These also breed in the fall, and they lay eggs in mossy areas, kind of like this right here, at the edge of seasonal wetlands. Um, their preferred moss type is actually sphagnum moss. The females will actually attach their eggs up underneath that moss, and they will remain with them until they hatch, and then they have a very short larval period, so they only you know so they really only have gills for about a month or a little over if i'm thinking correctly about 30 days and then they morph into miniature versions of the adults so yeah really cool natural history with these this is just a beautiful one too nice orange coloration beautiful tail um, nice healthy adult four-toed salamander can't beat that I'm going to get some photographs of this big girl here, and we'll see if we can find anything else. I'm loving the diversity here. This is actually an incredible region for salamanders. All right, I just left, and I'm currently driving back to North Georgia. Uh, really productive day today. You know, it's getting close to dark now, and I've been in a full day in those wetlands, so I feel like it's a good time to call it a video here. I'm extremely happy with that. Just, you know, awesome diversity today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing it. You know, um, five mud salamanders is really good for anywhere in the range, let alone down here. And we got two species of ambistima, three lined salamanders, dwarf salamanders, uh, four toed salamander. Lots of really good stuff. Um, it is salamander season now, so expect more videos like this coming your way. I'm going to be taking trips to film similar diversity but in other areas and target some other species kind of like the Gulf Coast mud that just don't get much attention and there are not many people find them. So yeah, um, as you guys know I love all reptiles and amphibians but salamanders are my favorite animals and I feel like I'm better at finding them than anything else. So yeah, as the season progresses I look forward to showing you guys more. But like, comment, and subscribe if you want to and I will see you guys next time I go out. Thanks for watching.